and welcome to another episode of Fubar. In today's video, I want to talk about AWS Cognito. This is a video that will take a couple of parts to get through. And in this video, we are configuring a Cognito user pool and a Cognito identity pool using serverless framework. So if you're interested in watching more content about serverless, cloud computing, and software engineer practices, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> must be one of the most requested videos by you. As you can see, I'm doing my homework and going through my backlog and making you happy with your comments and what you want to see. And this video has been requested for, by many of you on configuring Cognito with serverless framework. So I think this will be a two part video. First, where we'll do the backend and then we will do the client app. And in this video, we'll do the backend. We are configuring the Cognito user pool, the Cognito identity pool, the Cognito client. I will go through all these concepts and then we will set up the client in the next video. So let's start by understanding what is AWS Cognito. AWS Cognito is a authentication and authorization as a service from AWS. And it has two parts. It has the user pools and it has the federated identities or identity pools. And we need both. So what are the user pools? The user pools are whenever you want to have a database of users. So this service will allow you to create a user, register a user, store a user, and all the user information, so we have a database. So it does all this kind of user management. A user pool is basically a database of users. That's what we are going to create. So basically you can create a username and password and then store it in this database of users and do some things with it. And what kind of things you can do with it? Well, you can get an identity an AWS identity. And for that, we are going to use the federated identities. So federated identities or identity pools, as I will call them in this video, are temporary permissions to AWS services. So basically we will create a role and a policy for these users when they are authenticated to a system. If the username and password in the user pool are valid, they will create these AWS permissions into performing actions in different AWS services by calling an API gateway or retrieving a file from S3 or, I don't know, accessing some database. So external users can get temporary permissions into AWS resources. And to do that, basically users need to register or sign in as you have been using in normal services where you just put your username and password. And when that happens, then you will need an app from the user pool. So basically apps are allowing unauthenticated access to this user pool. So you can do the sign in, the registration. So the flow goes, the user will create a user with the user pool, you calling this uh, unauthenticated endpoint for registering user from the app. And then it will get the user and password stored in the user pool. And then whenever the user wants to, I don't know, call an API gateway, we'll go and log in. And then it will get from the identity pool permission, temporary permission to perform action in this API gateway, meaning it can call this API gateway and this API gateway will be able to call this Lambda. So basically we are allowing externals to call our authenticated API gateways. So in this video, we are going to create all of this mumble jumble in the serverless YAML using CloudFormation. And I will guide you step by step on what we are creating. It's pretty straightforward and you can barely copy paste it from the code. The code will be available in GitHub so you can take a look. And I will leave you the link to the GitHub repo in the description. All of this, what we are doing here, can be created from the AWS console, but as always, we like to do it as infrastructure as code, because this means that we can have these user pools, the same user pool with different names in different environments or in different AWS accounts, and we can replicate this. So we always want to use infrastructure as code. So now let's go to the code and see how is this done. So we are going to start as always, we are going to create a new 
we are going to create a new directory and there we are going to create a serverless project. SLS create template with the AWS Node.js template and we are going to name it SLS Cognito Backend. You can put any name you want. And when that's created, we can open it with Atom. And in there, we are going to edit the serverless YAML first. We are going to use Node 8. And I will just put the profile. That is my, my blog profile with the credentials for that. And then I'm going to add an API gateway to the Lambda so we can test that later. I'm just going to create a path hello with the method get and then I'm removing all the extra comments in here because it's quite confusing. So I just remove everything that is commented, cleaning up a little bit the serverless YAML because we are going to add quite a lot. Good. Now I'm going to add the resource property because we are going to write CloudFormation. And the first thing we are going to write is the Cognito user pool description in CloudFormation. So basically we are creating a new user pool and we are putting that name, Cognito SLS Backend User Pool. As simple as that, we have a user pool. This will come with all the default properties from CloudFormation. And then I'm going to create a client for that user pool. As I said, the client is going to be used to call unauthenticated endpoints like the register and the login. So for that, I'm just going to create a user pool client with that name and it's pointing and it's pointing to the user pool that we just created. And this also comes with the default properties from the uh, CloudFormation. And after that, I'm going to create an identity pool. And that is identity pool with the name that we are specifying there, Cognito SLS backend identity pool. You can find the documentation for these definitions in the AWS page for the CloudFormation. I leave the links in the description box. And when we create an identity pool, we need to provide some roles. This is the roles that the users will be assuming, either when they're authenticated or unauthenticated. And when they are authenticated, uh, they can call the Lambda and we will give policies for those roles. So we have the role authenticated role and the unauthenticated role. Now we are defining the authenticated role and basically we are just creating the role with that policy document that allows the basic things for the Cognito and then it allows to invoke APIs, meaning that it will be able to invoke an API. And for the unauthenticated role, the policy doesn't have much, only has the basic Cognito things that is the analytics and some and that's all we need to create the two roles. The next thing we need to do is we need to secure this API. And for that, we are going to call it in the next video from a web app. So we will define the course and we will put the authorizer to the AWS IAM because now Cognito will be giving AWS IAM credentials temporary to this user, but they're AWS credentials. So we can use that as an authorizer. In the handler, as we are using course, you will need to add that access control uh, header and well, we just change the message. So now we deploy and after we deploy, we can go to the AWS console and see what we have created. I will speed this up so we can go and check it out. So when everything is deployed, you will see the URL for this API gateway. If you call it, you won't be able to log in because you need AWS IAM permission and you don't have it when you're calling it from Postman. If we go to Cognito, we can see that there is the user pool that we just created and there is a client that is the one we created with the right name. And if we go to the federated identities, we can see that there is one federated identities. And if we go to edit, we can see that it has the roles with the names that we just created. There you can see all the information uh, for the authentication provider we will be using the user pool and that uh, app ID. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. I recommend you to read the documentation on AWS Cognito to understand better what is this doing. And in the next video, I don't know if it's the next one following this or a next one in the future, I will be working with the client. So we are going to create a small web app that will be login and it will have a registration to create a new user. It will be login. 
and then it will be calling an API gateway that we have created in this video with the authentication, the Cognito authentication needed. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to know when that video is out. And if you want around here, as always, there are other videos from my channel to, for you to watch. So go ahead and click. And if not, I see you in the next episode of Wubar. Ciao!